Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Mesquite, Texas. Um, it is a beautiful day outside, gathered together in our homes and here at the church um, to celebrate this day, the day that God has made. Today is a special day in most churches around the world. It is World Communion Sunday. And so um, the sermon and everything that we're going to do will revolve around that message this morning. If you will take a minute and celebrate with each other and have community together by putting a hi, a hello, whatever you want in the chat session, spreading the peace of God to one another, word peace, and letting everyone know that you are here with us together um, and ready to worship um, with all of us. And then if you will also um, hit that share button down there on your Facebook page or wherever it is, and um, share this live worship service with your friends and family. It will um, allow us to reach more people as we worship together. So welcome to worship. Welcome to First Church United Method, First United Methodist Church of Mesquite. And the band has a great hymn of the church. You should recognize it. You might even want to stand up at home and let's sing um, Standing on the Promises. <laughs> And truly we do and are standing on those promises this morning. As we move into our prayer time together, there's a few requests that um, I need to lift up to you and our church family and those that are viewing as we, as we combine together to um, pray. And that would be, first one would be Laura Thomason, uh, our bass player's wife up there, Bill's wife. Um, she had a little bit of a fall and she broke her wrist this week. Um, in two places, and so um, uh, after spending a little bit of time in the ER, she's waiting to go see the, um, another doctor to see how that can be further treated, so keep Laura in your prayers. And then Riley, David and Lisa Burris's granddaughter, is um, in Children's Hospital and is not doing well, so keep Riley in your prayers. Along with Peter, Peter is Barbara's friend that we've mentioned several times in New York. Um, continue to keep him in prayer. And then um, our children's director, uh, Lynn, her son, Matthew, um, has had some different um, health diagnosis the past couple of weeks um, with seizures and things, pretty serious. Um, and so we lift Matthew up in prayer as well. If you have other prayer requests, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment just now before we go together in prayer and write those or type those in the chat session, Angela will get those and she will forward those on to Pastor Tom and to the office 
and we will make sure to keep everyone updated with that prayer list and those prayer concerns. Um, and if they're there, you can check your chat list and um, just go ahead and start praying for those folks as well. So let's go together in prayer, please. Creator God, as we gather around this wonderful meal everywhere and in every place, bless us, your children. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, linking arms around the world, pour your grace into us all. Grace us with your presence as we quietly and loudly pray to you. May we see in each other your light, your love, and you. May it not matter our differences, our names, and our languages, our looks, and our way of doing things. May what matter today and every day be that we are one in you. And as we pray, many we call to mind our brothers and our sisters who are unable to be with us today, whether in body or spirit. May you bring comfort to all those who seek you. Amen.
just wanted, before I start my children's message, to thank Miss Claudia for helping me out last week. She did an amazing job, and I don't think we would have had fun without her. I'm pretty sure everybody had a blast. So, this week, um, I'm going to do my children's message on our lessons. Um, yes, it is World Communion, um, and some of the information that I give you for this lesson is kind of ties into um, communion and why we have it. Um, so, God saw how it was good. How, how, sorry, God saw how good it was. Genesis 1:12. God creates living things. So I'm going to tell you the story between Genesis 1 and 20 to 25. Prepare to wonder. The creative creation story continues. The swarming of the living things is a description of how all creatures inhabit the earth. God divides the animals into three categories. We have sea animals, sky animals, and land animals. We are land animals, just so you know. God made a diverse population and demonstrated the importance of all things. God knew that each creature would serve a purpose and be contributing part of creation. God did not just create one thing. God created many. God gives a blessing to all living things to reproduce. This is a poetic expression of giving power. It is also important because God sees that all living things are good, and God wants to continue creation, bringing forth all of life. There is the continual theme of God calling all of creation good. Diversity of creation is important and good. God's creativity has endless possibilities, and there is so much more to come in the marvelous creation story. God imagined a diverse world where each and every living thing was important. So let's remember, each and everything is important. Everything. All children can also use their imagination to create. I use my imagination on a regular basis. I tend to daydream. Not always that good. They do this every day when they play. So it's really important that our children have the opportunity to play. I actually uploaded on our Google Classroom the next video that talks about the creation. You can watch it and enjoy it. It's actually quite a good uh, video. There's also a homework project for parents and kids and family and I know, I know, I know, we have all been around each other for so long because of COVID, but this is a good way for us to work together and actually communicate with each other. So that's up in there too. I really want you to remember that God created us in his image because he loved all of us. So each and every one of us has a part of him in them, and that's part of the creation story. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the lessons you are teaching me. Thank you for my family and friends. Thank you for the time we are together and apart. Dear Lord, please give me the guidance to know you love me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job, Lynn. Yeah, and without knowing, it actually does tie into uh, the message this morning with it being World Communion Sunday. And so let's take a look at our scriptures. There's two of them. Um, you can follow along um, on the screen or if you have your Bible handy. Um, and they, uh, we'll start with Habakkuk chapter 1, uh, 1 through 4, and then chapter 2, 1 through 4. And then on to 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 through 14. So this is the message Habakkuk the prophet received. Um, and the Lord... Um, um, is speaking to this prophet and says, Lord, how long must I ask for help and you ignore me? I cry out to you about violence, but you do not save us. Why do you make me see wrong things and make me look at trouble? People are destroying things and hurting others in front of me. They are arguing and fighting. So the teachings are weak and justice never comes. Evil people gain while good people lose. The judges no longer make fair decisions. And down in chapter 2, I will stand like a guard to watch and place myself at the tower. I will wait to see what he will say to me. I will wait to learn how God will answer my complaint. The Lord answered me. 
write down the vision, write it clearly on clay tablets so whoever reads it can run to tell others. It is not yet time for the message to come true, but that time is coming soon. The message will come true. It may seem like a long time, but be patient and wait for it because it will surely come. It will not be delayed. The evil nation is very proud of itself. It is not living as it should, but those who are right with God will live by faith. And then in the New Testament, in the Epistle of Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 through 14, from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, God sent me to tell about the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. And he's speaking to Timothy, a dear child to me. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God as I always mention you in my prayers day and night. I serve him, doing what I know is right as my ancestors did. Remembering that you cried for me, I want very much to see you so I can be filled with joy. I remember your true faith, that faith first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I know you now have that same faith. This is why I remind you to keep using the gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Now let it grow as a small flame grows into a fire. God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed to tell people about our Lord Jesus, and do not be ashamed of me in person, for the Lord, in person, for, in prison, sorry, for the Lord. But suffer with me for the good news. God, who gives us the strength to do that, saved us and made us his holy people. That was not because of anything we did ourselves, but because of God's purposes and grace. That grace was given to us through Christ Jesus before time began, but it is now shown to us by the coming of our Savior, Christ Jesus. He destroyed death, and through the good news, he showed us the way to have life that cannot be destroyed. I was chosen to tell that good news and to be an apostle and a teacher. I am suffering now because I tell the good news, but I am not ashamed because I know Jesus, the one in whom I have believed, and I am sure he is able to protect what he has trusted me with until that day. Follow the pattern of true teachings that you heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Protect the truth that you were given. Protect it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Pray with me. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, who is my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Justice never prevails, the prophet Habakkuk complained. Violence seems to always win. How long, God, before you fix this mess? How, 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 God answered Habakkuk. And so God said, write the vision of justice in big, bold letters so that even someone who is speeding by will be able to read it. Make it plain because God's vision is true. And the Timothy addressed in our epistle reading was wondering some of the same things as Habakkuk. How long, God, before your people stop being persecuted for speaking about the ways of Jesus? Don't be ashamed or afraid, the letter writer tells him. We've been called into a holy way of living through grace, a grace given by Christ even before the beginning of time, even without having to earn it. For God's purposes, keep speaking God's grace in big, bold words so that even those who want to thwart God's purposes will notice, make it plain, because this grace is the truth. World Communion Sunday is one way Christians have been writing God's vision of justice and grace 
in big, bold letters since it was first conceived in 1936. This day reminds us, whoever the particular us is, that all Christians across the globe and across time are connected through the breaking of bread as Jesus instructed at the last meal he shared with his disciples. No matter our differences, we have in common the visible outpouring of God's grace at this table. Communion is one of the two sacraments, the other being baptism, is one of the, those essential unifying tenets of the United Methodist denomination. Communion is simply a visible sign of the grace, forgiveness, and presence of God in Christ. It represents both a memorial of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and a joyful reminder of the ways in which God has been, God is, and will be at work in, with, and for the world. Yet even as the United Methodists believe the, that communion is one of those unifying factors in the Christian faith, it understands that expressions of that unity are as diverse as there are individuals. This is why you will find in different communion, you'll find different communion practices among and within different denominations and different congregations, not necessarily United Methodist. Some churches use only wine and some only juice, or some use both. We use juice here. Some use the practice of a communion cup, while others use small little cut glasses, or we use one for intinction. Some use the language of the body of Christ, the blood of Christ exclusively during the distribution of the elements. And some may don't use it at all. They use different language. Many congregations allow everyone of any age to come to the table. But some do not allow children to receive communion. Some allow only their members or those um, who have been baptized to commune while most do not have such restrictions. Differences of communion practice reflect a congregation's particular history and tradition. It also reflects the different theological emphasis that they hold true. Different congregations are allowed to determine their own faithful interpretation of theology and practice in their own context as they understand the Holy Spirit's prompting. Today, is World Communion Sunday, though. And we set aside a lot of those differences, or we're supposed to, to celebrate communion around the world as one church, as a church that is not always good at working together, unfortunately. But we are united in Jesus, but not always united in mission or in service. We are united in that one remembrance. But it is a day to remember or to strive to remember that we at least share a commonality. That we are Jesus' followers, however imperfectly we do so. And to remember that we share common sacraments, especially communion. This table that has been set before us today, and you setting yours at home. A day to remember that we share Jesus' table, and that table is wide enough for all people. That the sacrament of communion is so important in the life of the church. And to remember, hopefully, that whatever we think about communion, we don't have all the truth. Though we do sometimes fight over it because we think we have all the truth, and we get in a situation of thinking that other churches don't do it right, so they can't be included in ours, or they won't include us in theirs. Folks, we really don't have all the truth. So, let us not cast out a possible cornerstone of thought or a possible cornerstone of a person by, de by denying them access to the bread of life or the cup of salvation. Let us remember that we are a community. And as a church, we are called to live that community and live into that community as one body. Not to be insular, but to serve the world. To go into the world to bring healing and hope and health and mercy and love and kindness. 
to show unity of love and forbearance and cooperation, even among differences. That's one way we boldly proclaim how to live God's vision. This kind of unity is something we aspire to here at First Church in Mesquite. We love our community, and we love each other, and we want all to be welcome. No matter where they are on life's journey, they're welcome at this table. Given the escalating climate of intolerance, suspicion, and hate that is part of our culture now, our witness to unity is critically needed. That's one of the radical things that Jesus did, was to provide a table to which all are welcome. He started that tradition. To provide a table wide enough to seat all people of all thoughts and of all creeds. All are invited. You don't have to do anything special or be anyone special. All are invited to the table. It is very wide. We celebrate that today in World Communion and in our communion. Think of this. Think of the rotation of the earth. When the, first sun, when the first Sunday morning happened today, communion started on this planet. Maybe about 15 or 16 hours ago, if my math is correct. As the earth spins and the sun first rose over the international dateline bringing Sunday morning, people first waking up and heading to their churches in the Philippines, New Zealand, and Japan, then over to Taiwan, Russia, India, Turkey, Sweden, Nigeria, South Africa, England, Morocco, the Ivory Coast, Iceland, Newfoundland, Maine, Brazil. It's turning. A wash of communion going over the planet. And now in Wisconsin, in the Yucatan Peninsula, Costa Rica, Peru, California, the Galapagos, if there's a church there. But if there is, I bet you they are celebrating communion. Then on to Hawaii and Fiji and Easter Island, it's never ending. I'd like to think that even the workers and scientists and the, at the science stations in Antarctica, more than likely, are receiving communion this morning. A wash of grace embracing the earth in a cycle of people waking up as the earth rotates and heading to the churches to come to the table to be fed or having the bread and the wine come to them to be fed. Touching humanity. All of humanity. The woman whose husband has just died, and the one who's just had a miraculous cure. The depressed and the happy. Those who are alone and those who are with many. The child who is hungry and the child who is full and healthy enough to play football. The child hungry for attention, and the one who has more than enough. Those who live in safety, and those being targeted by militaries and terrorists and their abusers. All the ones around the earth who are being told, you're awesome, you're wonderful, and those who are being told, you aren't good enough, good enough and you don't measure up. Those in hospitals and nursing homes, those in yachts and on planes, in homes and in churches, God's grace for all moving around the earth that we are called to share together. Let's all welcome and be welcomed at this table, this communion table that we share in the church and also at the tables in our homes this morning. Open them up. Make sure everyone knows, your neighbors, your friends, that your table is wide this morning. It's wide enough to be fed in our homes and, and wide enough to make sure that our hands are filled with love. And may this table, this communion table, be a cornerstone of faith with a willingness to share generosity and love. Let that also be a cornerstone of your faith. I'd like to end with a poem by Jan Richardson. And the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide, 
And the arms will open wide to gather us in. And our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free. And our aching will be met with bread. And our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everyone will be at the feast. First Church, let's continue to be that bold, vision-writing community of unity, grace, justice, mercy, and compassion for the sake of the world. Draw that circle wide. Amen. And so we stay together. An affirmation here in the United Methodist Congregations, a familiar affirmation of faith as we move into our time of sharing this communion together. So let's say this affirmation together, you with me at home and us here together, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome, family, to the feast. This is the feast of God, where all are fed. No one goes away hungry. No one is turned away. At this table, there is room for everyone. This is not the United Methodist table, but Christ. It is he who has set the table and prepared a meal with enough for all. Just as the early followers of Jesus who would come together to share meals and stories and share community, we too gather at this table hungry and eager to be fed. Here we can eat our fill. At this table lies the mystery of faith. For communion doesn't work without a broken body. To share bread, we must break it. To share ourselves, we must be willing to share our own wounds, worries, and fears. Out of brokenness emerges wholeness and holiness. This is the paradox of life abundant. Love shared not out of perfection, but out of messiness and frailty, confusion, and self-absorption. The stories of our lives shared honestly. This is the perfect love that casts out fear. This is communion, learning to love one another as we gather around a common meal, regardless of age or gender or class or race or sexual orientation or ethnicity or public affiliation and political affiliation, disability or name. God doesn't care. This is the feast of justice where compassion starts. This is where we are fed and likewise commit to feeding a hungry world empowered by the divine nourishment of this, the Lord's Supper. At this abundant feast, we partake and participate in creating a fair balance for all. Come to the table, all, all, no exceptions, are welcome here. So on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, 
he gathered his closest friends, friends that just didn't understand yet what this final meal symbolized. But he took the bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it and gave it to his friends. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when they finished eating, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Boy, they were confused. They didn't understand just yet. And so, in remembrance of these acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. And the cup of Christ given for you. Partake and share at this wide, wide table. Outside looking in, this is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give for the shape that we were making. And just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door.
love that song. It's a new one for us. Um, I'm sure you'll hear that again soon. Um, so now we come to a time in our service and our worship um, where we give back um, our tithes and our offerings to God as an act of worship. Um, and as you know, the church is carrying on. Um, and so um, we carry on with our mission to the world. And one way to do that is by giving of our tithes and our offerings. And so there's an abundant giving app. Um, I, I think it's right up, it's right there, I, top of my finger. Abundant giving app. If you haven't experienced that yet, it is simple, it's easy. If you are in London today watching us, you can click on that app and, and give to the church. Um, if you're out on the boat, what a great time that you can just do that. Click that on your phone and and uh, submit your tithes and your offerings. It's a great way to do that. You can still mail in a check to here at the church. The office is still open. We're still getting um, snail mail and doing the things that we've always done traditionally. You can um, submit that way. Um, you can also, let's see, did I cover all those at the bottom of the screen? I think I did. You can drop it off in person. Jessica will be here. Pastor Tom, someone will be here to greet you and say hello um, if you needed to do it that way. Um, so let's pray together for our offering. Creator of all that has been, is, and will be, you are the God who sees us. You are the God who sustains us. How can we ever thank you for all that you have granted us? For you have granted us our very lives, creating us in your own divine image and calling us good. Thank you for the capacity and the privilege of giving May these gifts which we give right back to you transform hunger into nutritious food, literacy into education, thirst into clean, accessible water, disease into healing, displacement into welcome, and despair into hope. We humbly ask you to consecrate these gifts for the transformation of our lives and communities so that our abundance may be for their need and their need become our abundance. To you, God, be the glory. Amen. Steal the joy I
Stand in Your Love, one of the title songs off of the album that the praise team will be releasing soon. Um, we're still recording away and getting that, that album together for you. Bruce is doing a great job. Everyone's doing a great job getting um, that recording uh, completed as much as we can. We have that in the hymns album coming out. There is a Google form. If you'd like a copy of those, they will be by donation. Um, you can fill out that Google form that is on the Facebook page. I believe. Am I right, Angela? Yeah? Um, and reserve your copy of the Praise Worship song um, album and the Hymn Classic album. So there's that announcement. And then um, next week's going to be exciting. Our church doors will be open for you to come and worship with us in person if you want. Um, we will continue to keep it hybrid motion in person and at home. Um, so don't feel like you have to come. We will keep this format going for you. Um, but if you do come in person starting next week to worship with us, we ask that you use these back um, parking lot doors, the side doors back here. The front of the church um, uh, sanctuary entrances will be locked. We ask that you use these doors. And as you come through, use the hand sanitizers at both entrances to the sanctuary. Wear a face mask and sit six feet apart, distancing. Family units can sit together, um, but the rest of us, we need to spread out. We've got a big sanctuary. There'll be plenty of room um, as long as we sit six feet apart. So I'm excited about seeing you next week. We won't be hugging one another. We won't be uh, um, doing all those things that uh, holding hands and all the stuff we do and that we like to do to keep the community together, but we at least get to see one another and worship together. So that's exciting, and we look forward to seeing you next week in person. Um, so I leave you with this benediction. Before we sing our, our, our God be with you again, till we meet again, you were called to this table, and you were fed at this table. You were united at this table. Now you are sent from this table into all the world. Go, therefore, into the world with courage. Set a place for all who hunger. Fill the cup of all who thirst. And yes, as you go, may the spirit of power and love attend you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ uphold you. And may the great faithfulness of our God sustain you now and forever. Amen.
Thank you.